Welcome to the PIDE webinar. I'm going to try and see if I can do the slideshow. If I can, if I can't, please yell and I'll switch back. Um, thank you very much. This is the seventh in our series of webinars of energy. As you can see, we discuss everything but real world problems in Pakistan. We are so busy discussing the civil military divide. We are so busy discussing um, India and foreign policy. Nobody wants to discuss energy and gas, especially gas. So we thought that we'd take up gas today. Lots of people have been advising me on gas, including RF Amin Saab, Shahid Sattar Saab, and Anil Haq, everybody. So all the panelists are here. So we want to be at Baid, want to take up the real problem of Pakistan, and we want to discuss the real problem of Pakistan. And gas certainly is becoming a big problem, and we should talk about it. So keep your mics muted. I'll do a very short, the usual presentation, then we'll move to the um, speakers. So today we've got an excellent panel. We've got Arif Hamid, former MD SNGPL, as I said, one of our stalwarts in gas, who's um, um, spent a career in Sui Gas, knows it better than anybody else in the country. Then we got Muhammad Arif, member Gas Ogra. Of course, Ogra has to be included in a discussion like this. It's a very important, um, uh, what should I say, a regulator of gas and um, Arif Sab. Mohammed Arif Sab, we would like to partner with you like we partner with uh, NEPRA so that we can hit this subject again and again and try and understand it. Then we've got Sheikh Imran al Haq, former CEO of PSO, also CEO of um, uh, um, LNG in Engro. And uh, then we've got Shahid Sattar, um, former member of Planning Commission X, and now uh, with Aptima. So we've got an excellent panel. Let's see if we can open up the issue of gas, which is very important. There's so many issues. Some of them are listed here. I'll come to them later. But first, it's always good to remember, and I must put this before you again and again, so that we don't forget. In 1950, they realized that we were aid dependent. Liaquatali was walking on dollar crutches. And the donors were saying, let's keep them there, keep them on the crutches so that they remain in our clutches. Did we get independence? Or are they still making a policy? And I think we will conclude that there is a problem. And this problem is visible here. We have been in a fund program for most of our history. Is this something that we should think about? Be ashamed of. Are our thinkers even thinking about it? And I address my PID colleagues. How many papers have they written on this? And how many papers have they written on this? Should they be writing on this? I address my university colleagues. We've now got a challenge grant fund, the Rasta, that we've launched. And I hope that we will have at least 100 studies on these subjects. How aid dependent are we? Why can't we give up the fund program? Why are we addicted to the fund? Is it like alcohol? We ban alcohol, but we want to be addicted to the fund program. That doesn't sound very Islamic to me, but that's besides the point. I'm not an Islamic scholar. This is what's happening. The IMF is controlling a policymaker who are running around helter skelter. They're always in a crisis mode. I never understand why they're in a crisis mode. Policymakers nowhere else in the world are in a crisis mode. I've dealt with them all over the world. They don't see, but Pakistan is in a total crisis mode. But they don't see the craggy land, landscape in front of them. That's why they're running around helter skelter over the craggy landscape. Are you seeing the slides? I hope they are switching or not. Okay, the biggest problem that I want to repeat again and again, our long run growth is declining. Our productivity is declining. We are a declining economy. Despite the fact that we've got a youthful population, we're a declining economy. And everybody should be worried about this. If you're not, then fine, it's comfortable. When you've got a golf course membership free, it's wonderful, it's a great life. Um, our investment rate is declining too. Our investment rate is low and declining. 13 or 12% of GDP now, which is almost like no investment at all, because it's like a replacement rate. This again, I should keep us awake and worry us if we are a serious country. We've done a number of PID webinars. As you know, we keep doing them every two or three days. We deliberately do that because we want a wider policy debate. And I'm glad universities are picking up. I'm happy that so many universities are doing it, except that they need to follow us and choose good subjects and forget foreign policy for a change. What we see is we've got a huge amount of policy inconsistency. Our policies are badly made. They're made by donors. We don't know what we are doing. So 
We are in a policy morass. We are in policy inconsistency everywhere. Transactions costs or everything are huge. Whatever you do, the transactions costs are huge. HRM and SAIT mentality, HRM human resource management does not exist anywhere in Pakistan. The SAIT mentality prevails everywhere. Markets are not developed. They're over-regulated and there's lack of clarity. And today, as we'll see, is there a market for gas or not? Energy and gas are a deep governance problem, as we'll see. Cities are a governance problem. Information risk taking, we don't know what they are. What have we learned so far on energy? Our six webinars have been on power only. First time we are going to guess. On power, we've learned that the circular debt is north of 5.5 trillion over the last 11, 12 years. Currently, the circular debt that has piled up is now apparently 2.5 trillion newspaper have to be believed, but our webinar, we at least counted 2.2. There is still no clarity on any of these subjects. It's a total confused setup. No good papers are available. So we need to talk about that. The whole sector is an organizational mess as we'll see today. We learned on energy that the discos don't know what their powers are. They don't retain their funds. Islamabad decides everything. As Shakil Durani pointed out that the, 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 the Southern discos and the Quetta, et cetera, were far more compliant than they are today. So they have secularly declined. Why? The system is way too centralized. There's poor planning and especially one thing, demand, we don't know what the demand is. And demand side, nobody even thinks about. Everybody thinks of supply, supply, keep building more power without worrying about how much energy we waste. And there is no research or thought on that. Now let's turn to the gas market. Let's look at the issue there. And I'm a layman, I don't know enough, but I just talked to a few people and thought of some issues. I don't know anything about gas, I'm willing to learn. But I know something about markets and we've talked about it often enough. What is a market? To me, as an economist, the market is very simple. There have to be credible players. If I'm selling something to you, I must own that thing. If you're buying something from me, you must have the financial strength to buy it. So markets are configured when you've got credible players with credible balance sheets, with credible rights. What do we see in the gas sector? The pricing is done by the government. Most of the pricing is out of sync with the market. That is why we wasted our sweet gas like mad. There used to be a time, many of you will remember, that we would not switch off the gas fire because we wanted to save on the matchstick, because gas was so cheap. So our gas pricing has always been bad and negligible. But then who are the entities who are trading in gas, who are supplying gas? I mean, Sui Northern and Sui Southern are two monopolies. Why do you have two monopolies? And how? what is the business model of these two monopolies? What I learn is that they have no business model. The more pipeline they lay, the more return they get. So they have no business model. We even privatize these entities, national monopolies with no business model. I'm amazed at the intellect of Pakistan. You privatize a business that has no business plan and that is a natural, that is a monopoly. I mean, that's amazing. But nevertheless, we privatize part of them, not all of them, but 40% or 30%. My um, guests will tell me I don't know everything. The government is everywhere in the sector. The ministry and the OGRA are fighting all the time. We see that in the newspapers. What the hell are they regulating? If you've got government entities, they regulate the price, their prices determined by the government. So why does the OGRA even exist? The member OGRA will tell us. What, what are they regulating? And demand, we don't even know what the demand is. Now in the winter, I keep telling my friends, even my own house, when I go into an overheated room, there's an open gas fire burning and the room is excessively overheated. Total waste. Here in the house that I'm sitting in, there's a gas fire with one flame. It heats up the whole room very efficiently, very nicely, no open flame, everything done very nicely. So demand, we don't know. And I remember Shahid Sattar did this calculation um, when we were in the planning commission that just simply converting our geysers into something, uh, into more efficient usage would save about four or 500 MMFCD or whatever, almost five uh, megawatts um, of electricity. So it's, it's a huge amount, 5,000 megawatts, I think, something like that. Anyway, I'll be clarified. So the demand side is a huge mess. All our appliances are pathetic, outdated, and nobody worries about that. 
So what is this sector? Is this a market? I doubt it. I don't think it's a market. I don't know what it is. It's a government trying to do something and falling flat over itself. Again, my guests will correct me on this. Is there a circular debt building up in gas? I'm told that there is. The UFG, the um, un, uh, whatever, unidentified gas, unusual, this gas lost in the system is now almost $1 billion. And it's a huge amount, maybe more, $2 billion, I guess. And of course, because gas is cheap, everybody's setting up gas plants, and we're all trying to play this game. Can we get cheap gas, etc.? I remember Imran ul Haq a long time ago told me that, why the hell even do we even have a gas distribution system? Why don't we put everything through electricity? Far more efficient. But again, nobody talked about it. Sadly, our researchers have done nothing on it. Sadly, there's a huge conspiracy of silence on this, and that is why we are trying to open up this subject today. So let me go to the panel now, very quickly. Arif Saab, please explain to us what is this gas system? Can I mean, what is this? Am I right that we have no gas market? Am I right that the SUI entities are not commercial entities? Am I right that the OGRA has no real work? Am I right that the ministry runs the sector? I mean, how do we look at it? Is there a market in gas? Is there, do we have entities that we can define as gas entities? Arif Saab? Uh, so thank you. Go ahead. Bolia, so should I? Did you go ahead? Um, uh, yeah, Arif Amit sir. Arif Amit sir. Sorry, sorry. I should have said that. My mind is sorry. Then I'll come uh, to you, uh, uh, Muhammad Arif sir. Yeah, Arif Amit sir. Tell me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, as you know, I've spent about 37 years in the gas industry. Uh, so have a fair idea of what it is. Uh, all that I can say is that, yes, gas used to be cheap, 35 rupees bill per month and no one was worried about it. Over a period of time uh, that resources have been depleted to a level that we are now totally dependent on LNG. Uh, without it, we won't be able to run our system at all. Uh, Agra determines the price mechanism, which is the most important thing. But in the last two, uh, if you look at the last three or four years, with the LNG being supplied to the domestic sector, the whole paradigm has changed. And the domestic sector is being subsidized, but the government is, Agra and the government as such, whatever, whoever is handling it, is not giving the right price to the gas companies, due to which, as I'm told today, there's more than 70 billion uh, outstanding as far as LNG is concerned. It's a difficult situation because everyone in the domestic sector and as well as the political whim, they all want gas at their doorstep. As of present, there's 26,000 kilometers of pipeline, additional 26,000 kilometers of pipeline to be built at a cost of about 70 billion. And that would give rise to a further 1.8 million consumers. We are unable to feed the already uh, connected consumers, which are 6.9 million, and another 1.8 million are to be added up with 2.7 million domestic applications pending in the system already. So the whole system has gone haywire. No one understands that they cannot keep on expanding the domestic network at the expense of the industry, as well as the power sector. Uh, when we look at the whole thing, the politicians and the government is more tuned towards the domestic sector, somehow keeping them happy. And they are unhappy in winters when they really really need gas. And we are unable to furnish them. So the major problem that the company is facing as of today, as you rightly pointed out, unaccounted for gas is another issue. It is 11% presently. But if we take out transmission separately, which is power, fertilizer, cement on the, on the transmission sector, then the gas loss goes up to 20%. And each 1% costs around 1.7 billion rupee. So these are huge amounts and no one is really working on the metering side to improve the metering, as well as the pitting which has happened in the distribution network 
over a period of time, instead of laying new pipelines, we need to replace the old distribution network. And then uh, the theft item as people are unavailable to, gas is unavailable to people, they resort to theft. And with the LNG price being higher, the theft is increasing in the system. And you would be amazed to know that Karak, one place Karak, accounts for 4% of the gas losses of Sui Northern. And Bannu district accounts for, the whole Bannu district has 75% losses, only 25% people pay. So it's both law and order combined with the technical issue, which is pulling the company down. And then with the inflow of LNG, without which definitely the company cannot survive now, but it needs proper monitoring by Agra to give the proper price to the gas companies. And as of today, 2022-23, more than 50% of the supply will have to be LNG. If LNG is not there, 50% of our consumers go off. So this is the basic problem that are being faced by the gas industry as of now. Thank you, Arif sir. Thank you very much. Mohammad Arif sir, please but I, what is the role of OGRA? If everything is regulated, what are you determining? Ji, uh, alaikum. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, I'm very pleased that you have actually, you know, just pointed out, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Mulak, sir, you have pointed out all the major issues and, uh, you know, I'm really pleased that you have almost hit the nail already. Uh, the major issue at this point of time, let me just give, uh, you know, an overall view of only few issues, uh, which currently uh, gas market is facing. You know, OGRA is a regulator, so-called, but let me just, I said so-called, I'm sorry, I am currently working as member gas OGRA, take responsibility of saying it so-called. Why? Because it should have effective role in not only uh, creating effective market and when we say market, it should be a competitive market. No, breaking state, uh, a national monopoly into competitive market is not an easy task. But at the same time, if you know the entire role lies with OGRA, probably we can actually pave the way to, to reaching to the point. But unfortunately at this point of time, the serious problem with the gas market is the consumer gas price. Consumer gas price is highly subsidized, so especially for domestic consumers. Now, if, for example, the actual cost is say 800, uh, 800 rupees and against which your initial stab, uh, slabs are say 200 or 300 rupees, obviously there has to be, there, uh, there is a gap and that gap has to come from somewhere. Now, who pays that gap? That is another, you know, you know, the good consumer basically are penalized in in return. And who decides this subsidy and who pays who much is the federal government, not OGRA. And number one, number two, uh, RF Amitsev has rightly pointed out there is a serious problem with the unaccounted for gas, especially in uh, in Karak district and uh, uh, and other area you just mentioned, but. But unfortunately, these two gas companies, they're not seriously concerned about that. Rather than resolving the issues, they're just looking for ways and means to incur more cost to only for, for example, to save a penny, they are willing to spend a dollar. So there, there are many efficient and easy ways to do it. This is a problem, problem is in Karak area, that you know there is a you know lot of theft and that theft, theft need to be controlled but there are easy ways to do it the the country has been struggling to unbundle 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 but nobody actually understand what exactly do they mean from unbundling and there are more than more than maybe maybe a dozens way or mechanisms to unbundle and my simple way and simple suggestion is that if you really want to uh, uh, you know just get rid of this uh, 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 serious and high, level, high percentage of UFG, why don't you lease out that particular area to some private party? Just give your advertisement in the press and uh, uh, invite private parties 
and uh, uh, sell gas on uh, in bulk at your SMS and get rid of all don't steam activities like you know your theft and collection and service and distribution. Why don't you do it? You know, instead of basically looking into these simple ways to resolve the issues, there is always a a, a desire to basically incur more costs rather than resolving it. And uh, you know, I have all the sympathy for this public sector companies that, after all, they are involved in in uh, in very good uh, utility business. But at the same time, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Sab, uh, as you pointed out, forty percent or you know so percent basically is in the hand of private investors, and the remaining whatever is left with the government. The government at times provide to give whatever relief they give and that uh, benefit of that relief also automatically goes to those private investors with with without having any any merit and this another point which which rf amitsa pointed out that in win, uh, in severe winter the lng is diverted to domestic sector Yes, it is diverted, but not because of OGRA. It is diverted because of the political sort of, there is no commercial uh, commercial incentive at all. There is no policy at all. There are no regulations to divert uh, expensive RLNG to the domestic sectors and charge the, charge the, uh, you know, the lowest pricing slab from them and create uh, intercircular debt or whatever you name it. But, but if that is to be done, then that, uh, you know, the, the, the difference has to come from the government or from uh, special financial support or something like that. And number three, let me just give you another serious sort of, that in RLNG pricing, what exactly OGRA does? Only one thing. OGRA is obligated to determine what exactly is the actual unaccounted for actual percentage of unaccounted for gas. But unfortunately, there has been, I joined about a year ago, I've been studying this. And unfortunately, even I'm not satisfied with what the determination has been done and what percentage has been allowed on this account of UFG to RLNG. Even I may, may have question in, in, in a benchmark given to, to the domestic gas Yes, but but I have serious reservation about whatever is being given to the RLNG. For God's sake, it is very easy to say 20% loss, but it is nowhere basically uh, comparable to the percentage of any uh, loss of gas or uh, RLNG anywhere in the world. And I am seriously taking up this issue and trying to you know uh, control UFG as possible uh, as much as possible. But obviously, the cooperation from all the corners, especially the government, from the gas companies has to come and without which it is not going to be uh, basically achieved. And that is the only point at this point of time, the OGRA's role is only to determine actual percentage of US UFG, which I admit, open, openly admit that OGRA so far has not been as efficient or effective as, as it should have been. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm sure that with passage of time will basically get there. So, but in parallel, as I said, it's only just repeating the thing. As I said, there are, uh, you know, both soy companies need to find ways and means to reduce their cost and reduce their UFGs and try, try to find effective and efficient ways how to basically mitigate those uh, UFG losses. Thank, thank you. From thank you, Mohammed Arisa. Thank you very much. I think you've been very frank. Both the chat, but Arisa, I must also point out that I am sitting at the Ogra website just now. Okay. And I find something uh, very sad. I'll say it out in public. I find it very sad. There is just nothing on your website. I mean, you have not raised the issues that you've raised are not on your website. For example, there's nothing on UFG on your website. There's there, nothing on LNG on your website. There's nothing. There is, on there is actually, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yeah. sorry Doctor, there is a study that was done a couple of years ago on yeah. UFG, which Where? is on the website. Where is it? And yes, that does list out. Do you still uh, like to download it? Yeah. Gee, I'll download it and send it to you. No, you can yeah. download it and send it to me different. My point is very simple. I am an ordinary citizen of Pakistan. Yeah. 
my agencies must inform me of these subjects. I shouldn't have to use contacts to get, just like I use contacts to get, you know, other things. I shouldn't have to use contacts to get the study. The studies should be on the website. Why is the website so barren? Nepra, Ogra, all the websites give us nothing. For example, the issues that you've given us on the Sui, uh, on the Sui uh, Northern and Sui Southern, they are not on the website. RSR. Uh, sir, it is there. Well, uh, as Shad Sitar sub said, our this uh, you know the third party independent study done on UFG is well, very much. Like to see it. it should it be is. on the website. It should be on the front. Uh, well, well, that is one. Uh, uh, that basically uh, there may be an issue of designing a website. Let's leave that aside for a moment. But let's go on. Uh, Imran, Imran al Saab, can you please tell us? that if we have these two companies that are now 40% privatized, are, they, are the new privatized owners going to behave like the IPPs guys? They're going to hold us to ransom forever. Can we change the business model of these two companies? Can we unbundle these two companies? Or do we have a market without these two, with these two companies? Can the, what is their model for doing business? Do they have a profit and loss statement that they've been privatized? It's very interesting to hear Aray Saab, both the Arabs, Aray Hamid, I know for quite a few years now. And it seems that we are still where we were, what, five years ago. Uh, in terms of whether we want to unbundle, what do we need to do with LNG pricing, the UFG? The issues are where they were before. I'm sure some work has been done, but we've not been able to resolve the matter. Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, sorry to interrupt, Imran Sahib. Kindly, sir, up the Dusi device login or speaker off, sir. So that the distortion now, sir. Aapko meri awaz aari hai? Ab aari hai? Yes, sir. Up say, up say, up say. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Good. Go ahead. Uh, I have Amit also mentioned the fact that you know the. Uh, the, the shortage in the system or, or the uh, projected demand supply shortage, that's supposed to hit 6.8 BCF. And when I say 6.8, by the end of the decade, is if I don't account for the uh, two pipelines. Mm -hmm. If you do account for the two pipelines and you are presumptuous about the fact that they will come in online, we're talking of 4.8 BCF shortage. The only please translate that into dollars. What does that mean? 4.8 BCF. Oh, I mean, RSA will help you out. Five dollars a MMBTU. So, uh, so it's 4.8 quite a few, quite a few billion. Five, huh? 4.8 thousand times five, right? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. So, so we have no choices now, we have to decide what the pricing of gas is going to be in this country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to decide that the pricing has to be on our actual cost. And then yes, as Ogra uh, member mentioned, you know, it has to be subsidized or whatever it has to be done. But you cannot lay the burden on the Swiss. Mm -hmm. PSO has had this problem with the furnace oil that has now been passed on to the Swiss. So the circular debt is just the starting. It is going to run into the millions and the billions as we go along the line. Secondly, is there an opportunity for us to tackle this LNG issue? Yes, there is. The markets have turned. The situation, what it was in five years ago, is a lot different than it, than it is today. China signed a long-term contract only a few weeks ago at 10% rent. 50% of the contracts are now being taken away from print. Mm -hmm. There is significant opportunity to go back and look at how we're going to price our product. But what do we do? We are in the process or in the active process of buying LNG on the spot. The recent tenders are more expensive than the Qatar contract that was signed. Mm -hmm. Because of the weather, because of the seasonality of the uh, of the demand, as a country, we do not have the infrastructure. So even if I decided to bring in volumes, 
we do not have the infrastructure to import either through pipelines or through the terminals. There's a lot of talk of the two terminals coming in. I can categorically say that the terminals will not come in for the next four or five years mm. till the pipeline, the Russian or the North-South pipeline is installed. Mm. But even if that is installed, the ministry says that the cost of that gas or the operating that pipeline is going to be a dollar, a million BTU. How is this country going to pay for its energy? That's the first question, unresolved. We are not willing to challenge the status quo. We are willing to give, as RF Amit said, a lot of gas to our consumers who form about 20, 20% of the portfolio of the gas companies. About 40% is with the power companies. And we are willing to accept uh, gas usage, inefficient gas usage, whether it is in our stores, whether it is in our geysers, whether it is in CNG, wherever it may be. We need to very quickly look at efficiency improvements. And UFG is the first one that comes to mind. How they do that, I leave it to the Swiss and you know they can debate that and explain that to us. The second element is our energy mix. It is obviously a gas-based structure that we have. Without gas, this country will, will and has lost its growth uh, pattern. The, the lower growth, there's a silver lining to that. We have the time now to think back and say, guys, what do we need to do? Do we need to continue buying on the spot? We have the opportunity now, starting this month, we really can buy five cargos. So how are we going to buy these five cargos? If the two new terminals come in, the 12 more cargos we bought. Are we going to still stick to the spot market because we like trading? Trading is a, is a norm in this country, has been in the fuel as well. So why do we want to continue with that? Are we going to have a structure? But nobody is willing to challenge status quo for obvious reasons. We are stuck with this, with this uh, non-decision-making uh, role. Everybody wants to maintain the status quo and not change anything. Surprisingly, this fact that is very important to understand from Pakistan perspective is the fact that in the next five years, 25% of the contracted volumes is available to be renegotiated. And we are sitting right there to negotiate. And we should be doing that. But who will do that? Who will we negotiate with? Who is going to do the negotiations? The history doesn't support any negotiations going forward. Uh, the fact that Bangladesh, it is very surprising that Bangladesh can use LNG at five and a half dollars, six dollars, and MMBTU, but we have struggled and are not able to give it to our industry or make sure our industry is competitive simply because we're not productive enough. The productivity index needs to be looked into. What is the industry doing today to ensure that they are more productive and why are they not able to compete with the 500, five and a half, six dollar uh, LNG that Bangladesh is getting? Bangladesh has option also to refuse to buy cargoes. They got an offer which was higher than what their contracted Qatar gas contract was, and they refused to buy. But we are so dependent and so uh, reluctant that we are not willing to cancel a contract or defer a contract if the prices is too high. And so we need destructive uh, inspiration coming in the next 10 years. There has to be some structural changes. OGRA has to do its role, but it has to be more empowered. The point that the member gas has made on the uh, UFG has been on the table for many years. So is the cost of the uh, port that is there on the table, which is increasing the cost that we have. 
And my favorite, as you mentioned earlier, is why do we have two delivery systems? Why are we not willing to decide not only, not completely, but why do we have two parallel systems of energy being delivered to our homes, to our industry, unless it is you know, a, a process industry? Why is that happening? Why can't we look into and say, guys, we don't have the gas. The cheap gas that we have has to be used to value add. It cannot go into residences. Residences use LPG. Expensive, but that's the way life is going to be. CNG priced at LNG that the government is talking right now. We are not in a position to subsidize anybody. If you want to subsidize, do it through the BICP program, do it through an export performance related program, but just not announce uh, unnecessary subsidies without getting something in return. And finally, uh, there's, been cost, there's, a, there's been talk of cost of gas, whether it is weighted average, whether it is uh, LNG, uh, at a different level. Uh, we've had multiple discussions on that in the past. A closure needs to be take, taken. But in my opinion also, the other chain that needed is the merit order of the power plants. No longer should be done only on the pricing of the fuel. It should be a total number of capacity payment plus the energy payments. And then we really realize what plants are efficient and what plants are worth our while at this point. I'll leave it at that for now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Imran. Thank you. I think there's so many issues here. I'm so surprised that we don't talk about them. I think this sector is going to bleed us more than the electricity sector. Shahid Sattar Sahib, am I right? Is this sector going to bleed us more than the energy um, power sector in the future? And also, uh, yes. keep talking Let me... who's this we? Who's going to make the change? Go ahead. Let me put the, that $5 price in context of the 4.8 BCF. Mm -hmm. 4.8 BCF five, at $5 is roughly $9 billion a year. So uh, if I may uh, set the background and the issues, uh, uh, because uh, we're just talking now of uh, one particular side of the gas sector. There are other sides to it as well. So if I may put, uh, if someone could put on my presentation, I'll just quickly go through that. 50% of the commercial energy in Pakistan is from gas. The last five years has seen a growth rate of 9.4%. Pakistan has one of the largest networks connecting households. I think there are only four or five countries where households have gas connections. Uh, it is the most gas intensive country by far in the world. Uh, yes, uh, it offers a cheaper, cleaner alternative source of energy uh, to households and other sectors. Uh, but then uh, the thing has to be uh, managed properly. Uh, the domestic gas uh, is, production is falling and reserves are on a decline. New gas fields are not replacing depletion from existing fields. Uh, next, the shortages of gas started in 2005, six. And uh, this winter, the shortage uh, that will occur in the overall system is more than 500 mm CFD. And uh, that 500 mm CFD will have to be met by additional import of LNG uh, and as well as curtailment of gas to certain sectors. Uh, there is the, uh, the exploration activities in Pakistan uh, have been, uh, if we can go to slide number three. That's going there. Keep going, keep going. I'll be there. Uh, demand is ra ra rising very rapidly. Uh, and uh, the it, it basically, there's also a huge inefficient consumption, misuse of gas. Next, please. The 
government uh, uh, has uh, failed to assess and take action on the demand for gas. First of all, the shift from oil to gas uh, uh, was not uh, properly evaluated. Uh, and then the politically motivated gas allocation and consumer pricing policy has mushroomed demand. Uh, uh, and the lower prices have led to highly inefficient use of gas. The circular debt at present is 350 billion, out of which 80 billion is for the LNG that was used in the domestic sector in the last two, three years, but uh, and not the subsidy not paid to the companies. The rest of it is the uh, is because of the uh, determinations that Ogra made for gas, which were not passed on to the consumers by the government. Uh, the again, there is a, a uniform gas price for each consumer category across the country. Uh, this is only for domestic gas, uh, where people have. LNG that is uh, differently priced. Next, please. Uh, both SNGPL and SSGC are highly regulated uh, and all aspects under one control, creating a complete monopoly. Uh, the uh, the uh, government has uh, issued uh, something known as an allocation policy. And that allocation policy says that domestic sector will get the gas as the first priority. Uh, and uh, the second category is now uh, industry. And within industry, there are two categories. One is the export and one is the local. Um, and then you uh, it follows on by uh, through uh, to power, CNG, and fertilizer. Next, please. Uh, gas losses are a major drain on the system. Uh, the fundamental fact, fact is that uh, uh, the world average for UFG, unaccounted for gas, is roughly 2%. Uh, in Pakistan, SSGC is now posting USG at 17.83% and uh, SNGPL is posting at 11.45%. Uh, so if you take the average of both, we are currently seven times the world average in terms of unidentified for gas. The equivalent is the power sector distribution loss and that is only double the world average. So we are extremely inefficient in our uh, gas system, uh, much more so than in the power sector system. Uh, why uh, is such a high level of UFG? Uh, it is not all theft as is generally thought. Uh, a lot of it is uh, from aging pipelines, poor maintenance, uh, and uh, the number of leakages that uh, are, are occurring in the system, uh, it's, it's it's a surprise that we don't have more accidents. Next, please. Mm -hmm. uh, well, my immediate uh, uh, reaction to importing more LNG to filling the gap is that uh, if you have an ex such a leaking system of gas, uh, injecting LNG is not going to be the answer. So uh, this uh, fact, uh, I mean, both things need to be handled together. Then uh, uh, the next is uh, the import value of LNG. As you can see, we are roughly importing 3.5 billion worth of LNG we imported in 2019. Next, please. Uh, I've already talked about this. Uh, Power sector distribution losses are 18%. UFG equivalent of direct losses, 14%. Uh, and uh, the uh, about $2.3 billion in Pakistan is currently spent on ca candles, kerosene, battery part. Whereas uh, uh, the 
only about 25 to 26 percent of our population has access to piped gas. Uh, the poorer parts of the population do not have access to gas and they are forced to use uh, much more expensive forms of uh, energy for, me for meeting their household needs. Um, and then uh, the uh, uh, then we say that uh, uh, increasing prices uh, will, you know, uh, is not going to help uh, because uh, I'm sorry, I lost myself there. The pricing for gas at the lower end has to uh, is not the answer to the uh, problem. The prob the answer to the problem is switching all the people from using gas to LPG. Next, please. Uh, and this is just uh, giving, uh, no, next please, this is nothing here. Right, uh, we, now we're talking of the supply side that uh, OGDCL has predicted that uh, indigenous oil reserves will be exhausted by 2025 and Pakistan will also run out of domestic sources of natural gas. Uh, and uh, it, it also needs to be seen that in the last 17 years, there have been no notable additions to the gas reserves. So we, at the best case scenario, at present day consumption of gas, we'll have, we have 15 years of gas left. However, basin studies have pitched Pakistan's gas potential at roughly 10 times the current dis discovered reserves. The wellhead prices are not the only factor for low exploration in Pakistan. Uh, the main reason why oil companies are not exploring foreign oil companies in Pakistan is because of the very rigid and un uh, friendly sort of administration by the Ministry of Petroleum. Uh, and uh, to just to expand on this, if an oil company wants to hire a consultant over a certain amount, they need to get the approval of the DG gas. If an oil company wants to start drilling a well, then the well commencement notice has to be got from the DG gas's office. So, and all the operational committees of these uh, joint ventures, as they call them, they are headed by the DG Gas. So the all pervasive and control of the ministry is what is stopping the ex exploration sector uh, from uh, doing what it should be doing. Uh, and just uh, expanding on this, there were 22 foreign oil companies operating in Pakistan about 10, 12 years ago. Today, there are only three. And all those three are now selling their assets to who, whosoever wants to buy. This, this, surely there must be something very wrong, although the highly profitable ventures, uh, but the, none of the oil companies want to stay in Pakistan. Next, please. Uh, Pakistan is, uh, uses energy very inefficiently and uh, it's, uh, uh, I mean, about 15% more energy intensive than India and 25% more than the Philippines. And uh, this highly uh, inefficient use of energy uh, is uh, basically what Dr. Uh, Mr. Imran ul Haq was also saying that, uh, you know, we are not uh, looking at uh, the value added or the productivity side of the equation. Next, please. Next, please. Right, the, uh, the no, no, next one, please. Right, the, uh, the way forward is uh, uh, reducing energy intensity through, uh, first of all, getting all appliances that are used in the, uh, households and gas sector uh, to be certified at an above a certain efficiency level. Uh, and there are various other things. This uh, presentation can be shared uh, that can be done 
to improve efficiency. Like Dr. Saab, at your residence, you had these gas geysers, which were replaced with instant geysers. And I think you can very well vouch that your consumption of gas went down by a factor of five or six. Uh, next, please. Uh, global gas, the gas consumption uh, of the world um, is plotted uh, on, on these lines and it's been fluctuating wildly. But uh, uh, during after COVID, it has uh, fallen by 7%. And uh, that is, has uh, been driving prices uh, way below. I mean, we've seen prices of less than $2 for LNG. Uh, next, please. Uh, um, and these are some recommendations, uh, broad recommendations that uh, I, I have made that all expansion projects of uh, gas pipelines should be stopped until uh, we sort out the UFG as well as the supply sourcing. Households should be brought back to the LPG regime. Exploration in Pakistan needs to be prioritized. Uh, it is not that we don't have uh, new, other new gas fields that are waiting, uh, that can be found. We do have. I mean, there is an example, which is block 28, which is a block above Sui. Um, I worked on that block and I am very confident that it has about five, six uh, gas fields, which uh, uh, are nearly the size of Sui. Uh, yet we have not drilled a single well. And this fact has been known to everyone in the, in, in the gas sector and in the exploration sector for a number of years. This particular block is now uh, with Mari Gas as the operator. And it's been with them for two, three years. Even they've not made significant progress on this. Um, then again, uh, we, uh, as a... Uh, pointed out earlier by the uh, member gas, uh, why are we sticking to this model where uh, uh, we have the, uh, the government is supplying and billing and collecting? Why can't we outsource the billing and collecting and supply part? The uh, transmission is a natural monopoly. The distribution and the pipeline business is a natural monopoly. That can remain with the Swiss. But the actual selling and buying of gas has to be on bilateral basis. You have to set up markets. If, if you do not set up markets, there will be no competition. And without competition, you can't have lower prices. And let me uh, take uh, you to another side of the equation. If most countries in the world, uh, in the add-ons to LNG after it has brought into the country before it is sold as our LNG um, are roughly under a dollar. In Pakistan, the add-ons now are more than $2 per MMBTU. Uh, so we have to look into this, that why are, there are, why are there so many entities which are taking a cut out of every uh, MMBTU that is imported into the country and uh, and it is very highly inefficiently transported to the consumers. Uh, obviously, if you can buy LNG at $5 or $4, uh, and then uh, if you add on two, two and a half dollars, so it becomes six and a half, seven dollars. Uh, so this, uh, uh, the add-ons to the LNG business need to be looked at. Next, please. Uh, the, there are imbalances in the pricing of gas and electricity. Uh, for example, gas that is supplied to industry is way cheaper than electricity. So there is a mad scramble for gas all the time. And because what the industry does is it generates its own electricity from the gas at a much cheaper price than is supplied by the grid. So we have to have a balance between the two prices so that such uh, rush towards a particular fuel does not occur. And uh, uh, so, so that uh, uh, the, uh, it, it, the increase in demand or whatever is uh, 
uh, related to the economic activity and not the arbitrage between fuels. Next, please. Oops. Back one, please. One back, please. I don't know what I did. Yeah. Uh, the regulatory adjustments that are required are uh, that we need to have one regulator for both power and gas. And that regulator also needs to be regulating uh, the upstream industry, which is the exploration sector. Uh, without that, and with the continued involvement of the ministry in the regulation of any part of the sector, I don't think any serious reform can occur. Uh, the next is the deregulation in separating the pipeline business. And uh, the third that uh, I would say is we need to revisit the pricing formula that the SOEs have. They have um, a formula whereby they get 17 or 17 and a half percent rate of return on assets. Uh, this is, uh, it has nothing to do with throughput or supply or efficiency. So what needs to be done on that is that uh, you need to move from that system to a system where they have some incentive for efficiency. Uh, then again, we have OGDC and PPL, uh, the main exploration bodies in Pakistan. And uh, unfortunately, OGDC especially uh, has become extremely lethargic over time and uh, extremely, uh, it's very difficult to get them to do anything. So until you incentivize or break them up into smaller units and more manageable units, uh, which, uh, you know, actively and proactively start exploration, uh, the domestic supply of domestic gas uh, is going to go the way that everybody is saying down. Uh, but I am sure if we can turn around OGDC and PPL, that we can increase the supply of domestic gas quite dramatically within two to three years, if there is a will. Uh, then again, the a two prompt solution to the lower tariff for lifeline and lower category users is that uh, the tariff must be set at the cost of service and a direct subsidy to those consumers who deserve it should be dispersed to defray the extra cost of the gas. Uh, that's all I'd like to say at the moment. Thank, thank you, Chandra. Thank you. Thank you. That's very good indeed. Uh, so I come back to my question, Mohammad Arif Saab. The sector is a mess. We don't even have Afia. Do we have a, a, a kind of a infographic on this? Do we have anything on this, Afia? If we don't, we should have something on this. Ji, we have prepared an infographic on gas pricing as well as on the structure of oil and gas sector. Don't you show it quickly? Uh, sorry, I'm not prepared. Okay, it no, is problem, no problem. Mohammad Arif Saab, let me come back to you. We should do this, we should do this. I can't see anybody but Ogra doing it. Why is Ogra not the champion of reform? Why is Ogra not laying out reform issues? Uh, uh, sir, reform, basically that falls within the final government being policy matter. You know, there is a limit to what Ogra can do and that limit is also very wide. No, don't be disappointed. The thing is, for example, if these two soy companies are to be unbundled as this item has been an agenda for the last 25 years. There are World Bank studies, there are Asian Bank studies, everybody has been advising, especially from outside, that you know you need to unbundle and create, say, five companies. And now after 18th Amendment, there was a you know very big uh, sort of political move that you know let us even break Ogra to make five Ogras out of it and every province has its own regulatory authority after unbundling of these three companies. So basically all these matters are, uh, does not fall within the domain of OGRA, number one. Now OGRA still has many things to do and can do a lot. I, I, I don't have any, any sort of, uh, you know, I'm not shy of accepting what I'm responsible for, but the thing is, for example, OGRA can not force the federal government to eliminate, uh, as I said, 
even it's to me it's a crime to divert very expensive our lng even during winter to the domestic consumers without charging them at least the cost okay so that decision comes from the federal government not from ogra and number 3 there are there is a limit for example ogra can at the moment ogra can definitely uh, uh, sort of ensure our uh, uh, look into ways and mean how to reduce these inefficiencies and unaccounted for gas and that is the major area where ogra can play a role and apart from that we have already as i just said you know it is not that i immediately said this here basically i suggested it to the federal government you know in a one of the meeting last week and also to the sngpl that if there is uncontrollable and there is unlimited sort of loss and theft of the gas in karak and other areas why don't you basically you know uh, uh, outsource this this function to some private company so that your know, this issue is taken care and i'm very pleased to just mention that one of the senior general manager of sngpl mentioned that if if the losses which are currently incurred in karak area if they are eliminated then their ufg can go, come down to close to 5% and which is not a bad news but but uh, but this very small outsourcing is to be done by the sngpl itself does not require any policy or any measure from ogra does not require any policy or any measure from the federal government it is only a board's decision they can it's a business decision they can immediately just float a tender and invite private parties to uh, basically outsource this function and that is one that would create a bigger impact in creating or improving efficiency of this company number one number two Uh, sorry shahid shahid satar sab very rightly said that that ogra alarm is responsible only for mid steam and down steam and even under section 21 of ogra ordinance federal government comes and has the right and authority to advise policy guidelines no personally as a professionally i'm little surprised that that the federal government even advises what are the pricing components to be incorporated in in consumer prices of domestic gas as well as in prices of lng so if even if the pricing factors are to be advised as a policy matter by the federal government you no know, you can imagine the uh, how far ogra can go thank you thank you arif sir may let me i have lot of questions to go to but before i go i want to ask Imran and um, Arif Hamid Sahab, does it seems to me that nobody has any skin in the game? If um, I translate this as a phrase that now become very common in American phrase, skin in the game means that somebody has to lose if the sector loses. It seems to me that nobody in SNGPL, SSG, and OGDC and whatever, nobody has skin in the game. everybody is passing on ogra doesn't have skin in the game ogra is saying it's a federal government's responsibility who where did the buck stop where do where, where is the skin in the game third the second question also both of you should comment please we are now trying to privatize ogdc is that sensible imran sir no imran is imran there uh, sorry uh, Andy, yeah. uh, go ahead. I lost part of your questions. Uh, Question is, who has in the game in the system? It seems everybody is pa Ogra is passing the buck to the government. Government is passing the buck to somebody else. S S N G P L S S G C doesn't seem to have skin in the game. Ogra is oh, sorry. O G D C seems to be on its own. I don't know what it's doing. Lathajek, as as the member said, but at the same time, O G D C we are trying to privatize. Is anybody? actually responsible for the sector who is thinking well rf uh, rf sahab uh, member gas made a very good comment that why is ogra the calculator yeah and simply doing the calculations or doing the additions for the tariff the small the number few years that has with the government that was the norm I mean, Program. Imran, we are losing. Statement. 
or a letter or a guideline coming to it. That's the first element. To me, come closer to the mic. Come closer to the mic. Sorry? Come closer to the mic. Your voice is breaking. Yeah, maybe the connection. So, okay. can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Fine. Go ahead. Aja. So, the point to me is that Ogra is where the buck stops, but a powerful Ogra. As rightly pointed out, it is toothless. It really can't do too much. Uh, so, there has to be a structure change where the gas and the oil sector, as it is right now, and maybe the exploration sector, has also to, uh, need to both, all three come under the same umbrella. Hmm. Hmm. It is rightly pointed out that there's been a lot of studies on, uh, you know, breaking up of the Swiss into transmission and distribution companies. Hmm. We've heard this from Vesco in the power sector in the 90s. Hmm. These are all nice things, but are we ready to do that? No, we are not. Hmm. It will take us time. Until that time, the, the Swiss the Sui companies need to be strengthened and given empowered as well through either the board of directors not being participated by the ministry, independent, but that's also easier said than done. So to me, the regulator has to be the most powerful and the regulator has to also lead the, uh, the uh, competitive market development, the, the the, uh, the prioritization of the unit, whatever they would call it. There are a lot of challenges, but I think we are now at a stage where we can't have any complacency on this matter. And I would leave it to Ogra member who's trying to do a few things on the UFG side to take the lead on this, if he can. But will he be given the lead? And that's where the question is. The OGDCs of the world and the PPLs of the world, yes, they are their own entities. They're doing what they want to do. They come back and say, you know, we've done 60 wells a year and we've done 30 wells a year. Excellent. But is that enough? Okay. And we can't wait for them. Okay. They need to be taken, you know, not necessarily taken apart, but obviously privatized to a level where they can be. But privatization in Pakistan, as you pointed earlier, you need players who have the balance sheet to do it. Who is that player? Who is the player that can become a distributor of gas in Pakistan? Who is the player who can become a OGDC of Pakistan? I don't see anybody there. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Arif Amit, sir, yeah. can you answer that question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh... There has been a lot of talk of unaccounted for gas. Uh, the SUI companies are totally technically equipped to manage that. And it's only uh, that Agra has to allow. When I was there, we did do a three years program on the measurement side, on the pitting in the pipeline side. And we were able to reduce the losses by 3% in those three years. But since then, the emphasis has gone more on uh, expansion of the system because of uh, a return on asset basis, rather than putting in money where the pipeline is 40 years old, 50 years old, so it needs replacement. And the measurement errors are there in the type of meters under PEPRA rules, which are being obtained by us, rather than going in for high quality measurement devices, as well as the so in Northern is one, I, I'm not going to, I have been on the board of Sri Southern, but I'm talking of Sri Northern because I know they have the technical knowledge to handle all this if they are giving an amount to do it in a number of years spread over that time. One more point that I would like to make at this, although you have taken it up, uh, the boards of directors. Government of Pakistan has only directly 32% shareholding in Sui Northern. And indirectly, they hold about uh, 58% with 42% going to the private, private shareholders. Whereas there's only one independent director on the board and 10 from the government side. When you have bureaucrats on the boards who are being transferred again and again, and they do not have the technical knowledge of the oil and gas industry. How can you turn around a company? I fail to understand that one. 
uh, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, sorry, uh, Arif Sab. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, but I think this was. Uh, Arif Sab, Arif Sab, no, no. What I'd like to let's point hear, out. Let's hear each other. No problem. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, what I'd like to point out is that I arranged a loan from the World Bank for UFG control, uh, which was taken by Sway Southern and refused by Sway Northern. And then the loan that was taken by Sui Southern was returned unused to the World Bank, uh, $200 million at virtually free, interest-free loan that was returned and not used and not implemented. It is not the availability of money that was uh, stopping the... Jai, this is my question. They have no skin in the game. If I'm getting return on assets, the hell I care about UFG or losses or whatever they can all be. That's not my problem. My problem Absolutely. is to find the pipeline they, and collect the money. That's exactly what I'm saying. Until and unless they have skin in the game, which is they are paid according to the um, quantum they uh, uh, you know, Basically, distribute, yeah, quantum what, they sell, yeah. uh, they, they'll never improve. Right. Okay. Let me, I would like you to have a look the, at that project that we northern did. Uh, Arif Saab, I did. And I have all the figures. And I, I'm happy to debate them with you. Right. Right. Let's go to the floor. There are uh, engineer Jabbar Saab, I think. Is that Jabbar Saab? Oh, yes. Yes, please. Okay, go ahead. You see, I think uh, I, I have been also director on the Swiss Southern Board, maybe a decade and more back. And I've been hearing throughout the decade, only about issues. I mean, say the solutions uh, still, I'm thirsty of listening to the solutions. I listen to all, but I think only issues were, you see, talked about, projected, UFG is there, 1% would sort of reduce uh, 1.7 or save 1.7, then about Ogra, Ogra cannot do. I fairly remember that uh, in during my days, there were benchmarks that OGRA had allowed that certain percentage this year, certain percentage this year. So every year there used to be reduction in UFG, regardless of whatever was the UFG. So the tariff was being determined accordingly. It was like a deterrence, I would say, a prevention towards the mismanaged issues. But then what was happening is over there, OGRA itself got scandalous. Toki Sadek, I fairly remember, went in the jail because Tokra, uh, the benchmark which it had set, it traced past the benchmark and unilaterally, arbitrarily, without any public hearing, the benchmarks were increased. I fairly remember that. Now, one thing is there, okay, I remember 10 years back and all, when I was director, I was only emphasizing on one thing. I can fairly religiously say that during my period, there used to be 300 mm CFD condensate loaded gas in Tando LIR and all the smaller and other medium-sized gas units in Sin, Saman, Mayano, Latif, all were having 35, 40 and all together, I was always pointing out that it amounts to about 400 UFG available gas. Mm -hmm. And during the period I was director, I fairly remember the SSGC was seeking overbilling Really, it was, I would say, even the institutions like SSGC in the board of directors were seeking one time allowance to overbill in order to give fake figures of UFG to have a gainful determination of the gas rates. That, that, these were the state of affairs. Now, having said so, 400 plus at that time or so, 12, 13% UFG, these all together, if they would have been really put to the prudent use, probably we would have not faced such shortages and went after brand 13.7 while the whole world was wild, wildly going on the... Okay, okay. fair enough, Ji. Thank you. I think the problem and solution, Jabbar Saab, as I see it, is that we don't have a sector at all. We have bureaucratic or government arbitrariness. We don't have really a market configured. Mahmoud Khalid, sir. Mahmoud. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, my questions are a bit simple from the consumption side. 
One is that why should we penalize the consumers with this high levels of UFG? Isn't it the right to get some efficiency, legally speaking? Second is that why can't we change the mix of uh, energy use in our households? For example, shifting to electric stoves or moving to other heating solutions besides the use of uh, this natural gas. What kind of pricing can be done for it? Thank you. Fair enough. Anybody else, folks? Otherwise, I'll close the session. Anybody else? Okay, nobody. Well, folks, I'll come back to you very briefly, very simply. I think we really don't have a gas sector. I worry about companies. I mean, Jabbar Sab, you just mentioned this, but name me one company that has a return on assets. Return on assets is, is, is not a company, it's, it's a bond. And quite frankly, any company that is not taking any risks on its own management or on its own business model, that is not a company. So first thing is this business of playing board board on, on uh, these agencies is just ridiculous. And Ogra should be taking a position on this. Unfortunately, Ogra is not taking a position on this. And we've privatized 40% of these companies. I shudder to think what will happen if these companies are totally privatized and they're in the hands of sharks. They will take us to the cleaners because they have then a system where they've got return on assets, they've got no stake in the system. This is haywire. How can we even think of such a system? I don't understand. Secondly, I don't know who's thinking about the gas sector. Even if you empower Ogra, does Ogra have the capacity to research this system? I think quite frankly, we don't understand this system at all. As I said, I don't see any credible players. I don't see any credible um, you know, pricing system. I don't see any credible regulatory system. I don't see any credible exploration system. As an economist, I really don't see a system. I just see bureaucratic arbitrariness. You put my friend on the board, I put your friend on the board. The board doesn't do anything because they're a return on assets model. What can the board do on return on assets? Am I wrong, Arif Saab? But I look. Arif Hamid Saab. Am I wrong on this? Uh, sir, uh, you see, there's a limit on, uh, say, 7% put by Ogre. So when you go above, uh, we are talking of an accounted law. So we lose about 1.7 billion from our profit. Uh, tell, me, tell, me, tell me, what is Sui Gas? Sui, Sui SNGPL. It is not a company that should be listed on stock market. It doesn't have a balance sheet. It doesn't have it a. On the stock. It is on the stock market, sir. It's, it's, that's, uh, wrong. that's wrong. Because, quite frankly, it doesn't take any risks. It doesn't do any. It gets a return on assets, which is crazy. I've never heard of a company with a return on assets. Do you know any but, in the world that has a return on that, assets? So that is one reason that, uh, yes, you are correct. That is one reason that you have to go in for new projects. In the last three years, because of the pipeline laid from Karachi to Lahore, the company had a windfall profit and they went up to 65%. Uh, but now, because as of now, there's only distribution lines which are lower uh, in cost. So you will see in the next one or two years, the profit of the company going down because the return on asset will go down. profit, did you give the money back to the consumer or was the money kept by the shareholders? No, it went to the shareholders. It went to the shareholders. So the consumers take the losses, the shareholders take the profits. That's a great model. I think that's a wonderful model. Can I buy some of yes. uh, SNGPL too? That's wonderful. Is that what I'm uh, talking because As an yes, that's model, the, I don't see the model. So the basic model, this uh, started when the World Bank loan came in, in probably the 90s. And at that time, because the company was unable to uh, pay back the loan, then this return on asset thing came in, which is still in, in vogue as of now. For 30 years? Uh, somewhere in 90s. I can't exactly see what, what was. Maybe at least 25 years. So, so 93. 93. Okay. So that's still 27 years, right? So Imran, do you see my point? You've been a manager, in a, you know, CEO in many companies. That is to de develop another model for uh, payment to these companies, uh, but it has always been scuttled. Uh, I think there have been three separate times when attempts have been made to change the formula. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, what should it be changed to? Uh, you have to separate the pipeline business from the sale business because the both together uh, just uh, do not make sense. Yuji, Arif Sahib, Mohammed Arif Sahib, what's your take on this as member guest? Uh, we, we, 
फरमाया था कि कुछ या मुझे आई डोंट रिमेंबर हुआ एक्चुअली साइड के जी ये हर साल पाइपलाइन नई से नई बिछाने के लिए इनका होता है एक तो पॉलिटिकल सपोर्ट होती है इनको और दूसरी चीज ये है कि इनके अपने भी इंसेंटिव है दोनों सुई कंपनीज को जी ये अपने सिस्टम को एक्सपेंड करते रहे सो दैट दे कैन गेट ग्रांटेड रेट ऑफ व्हाट एवर एसेट्स दे इंक्रीज सो रेट ऑफ रिटर्न ऑन दोस सो ये इसमें तो एब्सोल्युटली कोई शक नहीं आपकी कंक्लूजन 100% सही है मैं एज ए प्रोफेशनल बिल्कुल इस चीज को सपोर्ट करता हूं कि आप जो जो कह रहे हैं ये ऐसे ही और इसको ब्रेक होना चाहिए और विद पैसेज ऑफ टाइम ये थोड़ी सी पीछे कुछ दो तीन साल पहले आई आई नीड टू बेसिकली चेक ऑन दैट बट आई नो दो तीन साल पहले ओग्रा डिड समथिंग उसने कुछ इसकी ये जो 17 और 17 एंड 1/2% जो रेट ऑफ रिटर्न है दोनों कंपनीज का इसका कुछ यहां पे स्टॉप लगाया गया है आइडियली आफ्टर दे वर ग्रांटेड लाइसेंस फ्रॉम ओग्रा उसके बाद ये वाला ग्रंटीड रेट ऑफ रिटर्न शुड हैव बीन एलिमिनेटेड बट सम हो इट कंटिन्यूज इवन अप टू टू डेट आई नीड टू चेक बैक एंड रिवर्ट बैक ऑन दैट मैं मतलब आई एम नॉट रियली क्लियर कि जी उसका क्या एक्चुअल क्या स्टेटस है ये व्हाट इनिशिएटिव बट आई श्योर यू कि अगर ओग्रा कैन डू एनीथिंग ओग्रा विल डू क्यों जी इमरान सर आई विल एक्सप्लेन दिस दी ए फला कौन बोल आई कैन इसमें कुछ चेंज हुआ है जो उसको इन्होंने वे ऑफ चेंज इट इन टू वेटेड एवरेज कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल इट वॉज कम्प्यूटेड एट सेवनटीन पॉइंट फोर थ्री फॉर फाइनेंशियल ईयर एटीन नाइनटीन एंड ऑनवर्ड इट विल ऑटोमेटिकली रीसेट इफ द रेफरेंस फिगर्स चेंज बाय प्लस माइनस टू परसेंट दैट इज वन चेंज द अदर चेंज इज दैट वी कैन डू समथिंग बट इफ द टेरिफ इज कंट्रोल्ड बाय द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान एंड ऑगरा एंड the gas fields give us gas at a higher rate and we are supposed to sell it at a lower rate then how can the company operate that has to be rationalized that a certain percentage of profit has to be allowed to the companies before they can even think of working otherwise they'll be gone in, in a few years sir ji bade bade mufakkir jo hai na for example milton friedman ronald coase many people have defined the firm to be a risk taking entity where it is the residual income earner that means that it has to take the risk and the profit has to be the bottom line and the management of the firm must be invested in the firm by taking the risk i don't see that in ogds uh, sorry in in these sui gas companies i think these yeah. companies are not firms in that sense and i don't know what the hell we are privatizing i think we should also ask the people who privatize them what the hell were you thinking i mean we just privatize things without thinking we are privatizing entities that are not yet firms Now, how do we change the business model? I'll bring in Vakas Sab, current member Energy. Vakas Sab, what do you have to say about this? You are on the hot seat now. We hold you responsible, just like Ogra. Assalamu alaikum, Doc Sab. Why should the people I'm, not hold you responsible? I'm sorry. I think my uh, microphone may not be. No, you were working. Best, fine. but working fine. yeah so i think i'm sorry i joined late but uh, i think i did hear the comment the essential public service delivery or the utility business um is often separated into asset business or the network business and the retail business and i think somebody mentioned it before me and i think the first step would need to be the unbundling of the infrastructure business from the retail function of it infrastructure business the way tariff model work usually they are uh, a fixed return on asset based um, tariffs the downside of fixed asset return obviously is an over investment in the system so many regulators over the past few decades in in uh, different jurisdictions have switched between uh, fixed asset based return to performance based tariffs but in the end, and but performance based tariff often result in under investment in the system so regulators switch between these two models and they try to optimize the investment um by giving fixed return it's usually a low return mm. so most of the shareholders of the utilities are often uh, pension funds but very stable low return business but that's how utility businesses as a firm 
run in rest of the world as well. <clears throat> the retail business, however, is a bit uh, different. In the retail business, there's often uh, competition that's brought in. Retailers and uh, traders, they use this network as third parties and uh, they pay the net, uh, network use charges and they try to compete on procurement of uh, cheaper gas and sell better services and you know try to give after sales services and uh, the payment facilities that's is the same model that's uh, applied in on the electricity utility side and similar model is uh, towards the gas side um so i i don't know since i missed initial i, I wasn't aware i just uh, saw your message and i joined no, now that's so I, I don't, the point is you, should we i mean i can understand the utility management system but to give two companies that have national monopolies, or at least regional monopolies, the power to expand the gas pipeline at will and to get a guaranteed rate of return with no skin in the game, I think that's a bit, bit absurd. I haven't seen that anywhere in the world. Even in regulated monopolies in the US or UK, et cetera, they have to take some market risk. They can't pass the market risk onto the consumers. Here we've got guaranteed returns. Is that fair to the consumer? Right. So I think often the way, so it is, a, it will be a regulated monopoly and usually you don't have competition, but I think it's, it's the function of the regulator that gets more and more important in such monopolies of infrastructure <laughs> business. And the way some regulators have dealt with it is they give return on utilized assets so they don't give return on unutilized assets so there's no incentive for uh, for blind expansion of the network so it has to be linked with utilization and good planning and that's how the regulators sort of regulate these monopolies but i think you are right in uh, pakistan perhaps we have very very large um, uh, utilities these uh, sscc and sngpl I think there has been talk of geographically unbundling them and make, you know, uh, converting them into smaller companies and then also somehow separating network and retail. But I think people probably have discussed before me, uh, gas is not a simple energy commodity in Pakistan. It is very linked to the political economy and politics and the way Article 158 in the Constitution was drafted in 1973 by the original drafters of the constitution. Um, it, so it, it is a very uh, provincialized subject as well. Um, so it's the so decisions are not simple. They are obviously very, very tough decision. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's uh, as a regulated monopoly, we'll have to look towards the regulator more and more, and they will have to come up with ways of stopping the uh, blind expansion or inefficient expansion of the network there has to be efficiency brought in and i think the the problem um, we often face is uh, the decisions of the retail business are very different from the uh, from the network expansion business and i think until those two managements are separated the right focus may not uh, come in but before doing all that we may need to agree as a nation and as uh, um, as units of federation on how to manage energy systems in general. And I think that lack of understanding and consensus gets reflected in so many of our decisions. And but uh, I don't I, see- I still have a problem. I think quite frankly, we see too much passing of the buck. Ogra says that we are not responsible. It is the ministry. SNDPL says, we don't know. We've got a return of assets. We can sit comfortably. Planning Commission says, we don't know. I've been there. I, I remember that. And we don't somehow, there is nobody who seems to be aware of the system. And I've gone to the OGRA website, I've gone to the Planning Commission website, I see nothing that can inform me. Normally I go to the websites of countries and I get download, I've done this work in the IMF long enough, I download reports from which I learn. We have no report on this setup that can inform us. Who is thinking about this setup? It's too easy. I find it too easy to blame the politics and blame the political economy when technocrats escape their own work by saying, hey, it's the political economy that's holding us back. I think the political economy needs to be informed by technocratic research. Do we have that? Uh, probably not. I think because of its complexity, what has probably happened, and I've noticed in the, in the past few months since I joined this, the, the setup, I think there are just too many cooks at the same time. And since there are too many cooks, there is no real cook 
or designer anymore. So ministry is indirectly into operations and um, so Ogra is also there. And so everybody comes up with new ideas and uh, and then because everything has to go through its its own uh, political approval process and, uh, you know, the CCI and the way gas issues are dealt with. So um, I think the ideas are brought up and they don't really get to their logical conclusion. So I think there's the, I agree with you that there is a, um, there is a, a stalemate, so to speak, in, in the way we have to make some decisions. Uh, but generally, I think technocrats probably know the, the way forward, uh, but I don't know if we have the will or the capacity to implement that and you know get out of this uh, fix that we are in. I think uh, we have learned once again that we are absolutely ignorant of the way things are happening, and I hope we are not going to go back to the World Bank to create another mess. Why can't we, for a change, start? Uh, can I go to uh, final comments? Uh, uh, number one uh, is that uh, at the last I saw, so a sudden, uh, the uh, liabilities, uh, the contingent liabilities of Sui Southern are many times it's paid up capital. So their companies are bankrupt already. Uh, so <laughs> secondly, this uh, provincial uh, 158 and so on, because of the decline in the domestic gas production, uh, that's not really going to hold back things any further. Uh, because, uh, uh, I mean, as last month, uh, I think it was only 70 or 80 mm CFD of gas that went out from Sindh to any other province. So, uh, I mean, these are things that are being left behind. Uh, we really need leadership. Uh, leadership to take this particular sector, uh, not just the gas sector, I'm talking of the energy sector, out of the existential crisis that we have. And I think the uh, uh, webinars on power have made it very clear that uh, Pakistan economically cannot survive unless we resolve these issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thanks. So, um, uh, Imran Saab, any last comments? Imran al -Haq? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, there's obviously the power sector and the gas sector have similar challenges. Uh, unless we empower these guys, the two companies that we have in the gas sector, get them out of the control, or at least at the director level, get them out of the control, of the uh, ministry. Also, much easier said than done is the, is, the, is the desire of the ministry to control them. The structure will remain the same. The structure has to change. The business model has to change and let the professionals lead it. I'm sure, as Arif said, there are enough competent people around to help them and find a solution. But the problem is the interference. And the question is, how will that interference go away? The political agenda to have the pipeline connections, to give it to the consumers, to the constituency, how will that go away? And they need to have the final ability. Hello, we lost you, Imran. OK, let's go to. Go ahead, Imran. Announce the tariff. Determine how the is implemented. Finally, the tariff that is determined has to be implemented. I mean, there can't be this political issue of saying, you know, we want to do it, we will not do it, we'll defer it for six months. If you want to defer it, let the uh, utilities get the money and then you can charge it to somebody else. You just can't leave them hanging in the air. No business can work the way these guys work. No government organization can work the way the structure is today. Good point. Very good point. Very good point. Mohammad Arif Sir. Sir, I I think I only have to say one point that you specifically ask about privatization of OGDC, and I don't think there was a clarity or a detailed discussion on that point. 
and my personal view is that OGDC or any other strategic asset at the moment, and especially those which are high profit making organizations should not be privatized. Oil and gas is backbone of your whole system, economic system, and should not be privatized and should be kept in your own hand. Uh, example is, uh, e, 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 uh, you, you know, uh, what, what is EK in? Crutchy Electric. Sorry, Crutchy So, you know, no way. Although that is a utility company, but whereas upstream exploration, that is, you know, it uh, should be kept here because the, we have already seen that almost all the foreign companies have already left Pakistan and there is no hope except the public sector companies like OGDC, PPL to uh, basically fill the gap. And if we privatize, try to privatize again, not sure we'll get any benefit out of it. Thank you. Great. G, um, Engineer Jabbar Sab, you have Go back to our Khamid Sab and finish. Engineer Jabbar Sab. Jabbar Sab. G, Jabbar Sab, unmute yourself. Unmute. Yeah, it's OK. I remained chairman and few of the corporation and government of Pakistan where the ADB was lending. And also, I fairly remember the World Bank was coming up with a promise of 500 million US dollars for reducing the UFG in SSGC during the period I was there. But the only problem was that it was an exchange of not constructing or moving to interstate for developing the Iran gas pipeline. So we bartered that, you see. It was a big barter. I remember, I, I think it's no more classified information. But then the question is that in the projects where I was working, I was always asking the people who are coming from World Bank or Asian Development Bank, look, you people are giving us money, but have you ever sort of put the pressure of giving this money in reforming the, I mean, say these distribution, transmission distribution companies and in having a special audit as the money which was inflowing as what what is productive and efficient utilization, which would eliminate the influence of politicians under which the CEOs were working. The problem is that I was even asking in one of the project, look, I would think that you should implant employ some special audit towards the prudent expenditure. And I think we have much said about this case in Pakistan. This is, this is the extraordinary type of, uh, you know, financial conducting of business by these two companies, 17, 17 and a half percent rate of return. Just sleep. That's all. Don't do anything. Why to worry about UFG and all that, which has now crossed already 15 percent. One fails to understand K, what are the solutions? The solutions are before us. You have a UFG 15 to 17%. You save about uh, on the 400, uh, uh, 4 BCF plus equivalent of the gas you are importing through Anglo terminal. And then on the SIN, I will tell you religiously what was really happening over there. And I was insisting upon there are smaller fields which uh, could not be connected to the other fields because they were given at the older rates and moreover, their purification plants were not uh, having the size to further purify. So I was suggesting to look, the available gas, 25, 75, 35, why not to move a purification plant, a mobile, and keep on sort of uh, purifying this gas, lay a single line and somewhere near it goes into the grid. We have become indenters. We are only interested in purchasing pipelines. We are only interested in sort of striking the agreements of Qatar, which remains so highly classified and confidential that a person like me who is in the research institute of SDPI, it took me three years to access that document. And you are suggesting them, okay, why not on the website these figures? The public interest related commercial agreements even were made confidential, not in the approach of anybody. Now, very recently, you know, on the Gwadar, I remember the Rizwan Malik went in the Senate. Accidentally, I was there. 
So they said, okay, look, we want to see the agreement of tax exemption. He said, well, it is confidential. I have brought a copy. I cannot circulate another copy. So such is the pathetic situation wherein we are conducting the business of gas, which you are talking about. So what you, Dr. Sap, you are suggesting only webs out entries. I'm just wondering for three years, the commercial contract of Qatar gas remained so highly confidential that even I think uh, we cannot envy Dr. Kadir Khan, who may have been hiding certain papers, you see, from being leaked. And then another thing uh, which I would uh, like to say that we are not, we are talking about monopoly. I think it's not monopoly. It is oligopoly. It is not monopoly, Dr. Saab. Let us think about, and we have been hearing the talks from all the learned speakers, people with experience that, okay, consumers should be charged more. There are UFG losses. They should be done like this. The problem is that, okay, do these things help us? Everybody is just making a wishful bundle of desires. I don't know who's going to do it, Ogra or the Sui Southern Gas or Sui Northern Gas or Asian Development Bank or World Bank. Let me conclude to say that okay, my experience with these institutions is that they only give you money so that you are charged accordingly and you are indebted. That is their concern. And let me be very now clear. I was talking with the MD ADP during the time I was getting $400 million for a project I was chairman. And I said, okay, look, the money should come in smaller flows. And he was insisting, no, I have to also see my performance that how fast I am. If this is their fastness and on the other side, our delivery side, response side, transparency is jeopardized. I don't think that is the real type of a business we are doing. So let me now conclude. Thank you very much for giving me so much time. And let me say that, Dr. Saab, you are doing a wonderful things to talk about. But I think today's uh, webinar should conclude that we are only making wishful desires. And But those wishful desires, who should steer yet to be identified in another webinar on energy? Thank you, Dr. Saab. Inshallah, we will go back. Uh, Achaji, Arif Hamid Saab, you have the last word. Go ahead, Ji, what would you uh, Sir, uh, my view on this is that uh, in spite of having expanding so fast, we are only providing gas to 21% of the population of our area of operation. So we have to stop this expansion because with LNG coming in at a much higher rate and this politically expedient expansion has to stop and that money has to be put in to reduce the gas losses and, and change the pipelines which are pitted and the measurement and errors. Those need, that is where the money has to go in to reduce the losses. Okay, great. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you, Arif Saab, Arif Hamid Saab, Muhammad Arif Saab, and Anil Haq Saab, Shahid Sattar Saab. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for clarifying so many things. But I just want to say in the end that as Arif Saab said, it is energy is the backbone of our system. But I've never seen anybody mistreating their backbone such. Quite frankly, this backbone is going to break. It's like PIA, we mismanage PIA, we are mismanaging the energy sector, we are mismanaging everything. And I also don't buy it's political. I'm afraid, Jabbar Saab, even where is the Pakistan Engineering Council? Why has the Pakistan Engineering Council not given us anything on energy yet? All it does is tries to get contracts. That business has to end. The US Engineering Council will give us something on the sector. We need people to get active. I address my researchers, my colleagues, universities. I think you should be closed down since you're not addressing the energy problem. We should have tons of reports. Politics only takes over when technocrats are sleeping. Otherwise, politics also has to answer to the technocratic solutions. After all, technocratic solutions are like gravity. They do contain a society. They do contain politics. That's what's happening here in healthcare in the US. So my friends, I think all of us have to have a role to play. But each of us passes the buck and says, no, it's a politics fault. So OK, everything is a politics fault. Then we can all go to sleep. Great idea. Let's go play golf. We have to do our own work too. It's very simple. And then to turn around and say the World Bank ADB, for God's sake, stop looking to them. That's why I showed you those cartoons. We don't need the World Bank ADB. I don't think this is a problem of money. 
There is no money involved here. The problem is our own inability to organize ourselves. If we can't organize ourselves, if we can't think, we can get as many loans as we like, we will still remain where we are, but with more loans and more debt sustainability problems. So that's the thing. Finally, I'll say, I thought the Soviet Union was dead, but I see the Soviet Union is in Pakistan. This is the Soviet Union. They were making tires, huge tires, because the ministry was ordering it. They were doing huge chains because the ministry was ordering it. There was no demand. This is the same thing here. We are going around in circles because the ministry or because somebody in government wants it. Nobody has the time to sit down and think. Folks, what we need is solid research now, solid ideas, and I hope my university colleagues will do it, even, even put out a grant fund for them, Rasta, but I want to see serious proposals. I don't want to see junk that our universities produce. Our universities seriously need to be closed down, so as does our gas system. For a while, let's live in the trees and maybe we'll wake up to reality. All the best, folks. I thank you all. It has been a wonderful session again. Inshallah, we will do it again. Jabbar Sahib, we are not going to leave energy. We're going to do many more because I think a million are needed given the losses that we are making. All the best. Thank you. Khuda Hafiz.